infinite. They want us to find the sum of this infinite series. And at this stage in our math life, we don't know how to find the sum of many infinite uh, series, unless, of course, it's geometric. If it's geometric, remember we have that handy formula that the sum of an infinite series is the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio, where the ratio, common ratio is what you're multiplying by every time. So, kind of a cop-out, but, but we'll take all the help we can get. So, let's see if this is uh, geometric or not. And one of the easiest ways to see it is just to plug in and see what, what's going on. So, we'll start by plugging in the 1, and so we'll have negative 1 to the 1 minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's just a 1. e to the 0 is a 1, so we're going to go 1 on top. 3 to the 1 is 3. Now we'll plug in a 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. e to the 0. No, we're plugging in 2. e to the 1. There we go. Oopsie. All over 3 squared. Let's do it again. Plugging in 3. So this was plugging in n equals 1, plugging in n equals 2. Now we're plugging in n is 3. So we'll have negative 1 squared e to the 2, 3 cubed. And we could keep going, but if we start to clean it up, e over 3 squared plus um, e squared over 3 cubed, we can kind of sense that it is going to be geometric, and we're multiplying by negative e over 3 each time. So multiplying the tops by e's, multiplying the bottoms by 3's, and the sign is changing so it's negative. So that is our r, the common ratio, what we're multiplying by every time, is negative e over 3. And so now we have enough to plug it into this handy dandy formula that the first term is a third, and the common ratio is negative e over 3. And that's the hard part. All we got to do is clean it up now. If I multiply by a fufu, a fancy form of 1, one of my students just taught me that. So my fancy form of 1 here is 3 over 3. So 1 third times 3 is 1. And distributing the 3 to the bottom, that'll be 3 minus and minus make a plus, the 3 will cancel out, so 3 plus e. And that should be my answer. Let's just make sure we match. Yep, it's looking good. Excellent. Um, actually, if you're curious and looking at the answer in the back of the book now, the back of the book does fancy stuff with um, changing the look of this so you can see that it really fits a geometric form. And they do it all sneaky, but let me show you what they're doing if you're curious. You'll notice that when they rewrote this, they rewrote it with an n equals zero down here. And so if you're going to change your um, number down there, if you're going to subtract one from that, you got to balance it out by adding one to these. So we'll make that an n, we'll make that an n, we'll make that an n plus one. And they do that just because it's going to end up looking a little cleaner. But it always used to kind of mess with my head. What you're kind of doing is a little like a K substitution. But just think of it as you take one away from here, balance it out by adding one to all of them there. And the reason we do this is because now we can rewrite this as n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n e to the n, and 3 to the n plus 1 is the same thing as 3 to the n times 3 to the 1. If you're multiplying things with the same base, you can add the exponent, so here we're just going backwards. And then the reason they like that is because now they can pull the 1 third out to the front, this 1 third coming out to the front, and all of these are raised to the n, so I can put them all in one big parenthesis negative e over 3 to the n. And that's more of a geometric form. We're kind of used to the idea of a, of a sequence being in geometric form as having the first term si times some common ratio to the n minus 1, or sometimes um, uh, 
uh, or sometimes just r to the n, depending on whether you want to start with n equals 0 or n equals 1. Uh, but here we, here we can clearly see the common ratio. When we write it this way, we can pluck out that common ratio of negative e over 3, just the same as we got over here. Um, and you can always get your first term by plugging in the first value here. So when you plug in 0, this is a 1, so times the 1 third is a 1 third, and that's the first term. So that's that.